you want to be in this situation, having to go to work every day and deal with a boss who is making your life miserable? It does happen, though, in today's Relationship Reboot. We're going to get some advice on how to deal with a toxic boss. Our relationship guru, Dr. Kirsten Lynn Seal, brought a special guest, Dr. Tim McCarthy, a licensed psychologist and executive coach. Great to have you both here, yeah, Kirsten thanks. and Tim. Let's talk, first of all, what when we're saying toxic boss, what kind of characteristics are we thinking about? Mm -hmm. Well, there's sort of, there's a range, but the, the first thing that comes up for me is like people who really can't control their anger and who sort of take, tend to take out their anger on their, on their underlings, on their coworkers. The yellers, the screamers. Yes. The people who yeah. make the employees cry. Right. I worked for someone like that years ago. Uh, it's not great. Um, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. all have one of those memories of a bad boss. There's nothing worse than it. Going to work every day and having to deal with somebody that makes your life miserable. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it either, uh, at worst, uh, uh, being unpleasant in disposition affects you as you go through your whole day. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure it's, it's very easy in those situations to take it personally. Right, exactly. So, so you, you want to make sure that you're not taking it personally when you are dealing with a, with a boss like that. But it's really hard to do. Right, so so the understanding that boundary between what is yours and what isn't. Mm -hmm. But again, when you've got someone who is in charge of telling you what's yours, then that can be. That's why it's particularly difficult because they also, if you look at the power shift, right, the dynamic. Yeah. That's really you, your boss has a lot more power than you do, particularly economic power. And the hard part is really looking, uh, taking an honest self appraisal. What do, what am I doing that might be contributing to this? But with the terrible boss, with somebody who's toxic like that, you do have to really depersonalize it. So there's several things you need to do. You need to don't take it personally, but you also need to be able to have emotional support from other coworkers and also strategize, talk with people, find out about the psychology of this boss. Who knows what about them? What's their past? Have they been, have they been open to any feedback? And then decide, do you want to speak up? What's the best way to speak when up? When is it appropriate to do yes. that? How, how do you figure that out? Yeah, and, and that comes from that strategizing and really looking at talking with other people in the know who've had experience with this person. Mm -hmm. So you always have the HR person as the go-to person. Sure. Now, in some situations, in, in most situations now, corporations are set up to really be able to hear some of those complaints. But a lot of companies are kind of smallish, and when yes. you go to the HR, you're going to the CEO's wife. Exactly. Or you're exactly. Going, you know what I mean? These. So that's the yeah, caveat. That's 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 it's one the, thing here. Like we, it's yeah. a big yeah. company. You can go take care of issues. So, so there is sort of the warning. You really need to take care of yourself. Make sure that you strategize because you're right. In some companies, or best friend, or whatever. Yeah, the yeah. HR in a, in a smaller company. So I don't. I want to sort of, I don't want to discourage people from doing that, but there is that reality. Be smart about it. Know what the risk Be is. Be smart about it, yeah. Uh, what if there's no change? What if you are just stuck and your boss is stuck as well? Do you just have to quit? You might just want to start looking around, yeah. you know, for options. The other thing about that, too, is that it, it makes us feel um, like there are options out there. We tend to, when we're full of anxiety, and I think you were talking to me about some really interesting research about anxiety and how bosses are, yeah. right? When we're full of anxiety, we, we can't think clearly, right? There's mm. decades of research on anxiety oh. that suggests that. So, so that... that uh, well, it, it is true, absolutely. I mean, the research shows that now that that employees who, are, who see their boss as respecting them, they actually report being 92% 90 more focused and higher in, prior in being able to yeah. prioritize, and they feel like their health is better, and they also, and their sense of well-being, and their engagement in the workplace. So if we only were able to begin teaching leaders and managers, you talked about the, the importance of leadership training, it's so true. MBAs, it doesn't, it doesn't give you anywhere near what you really need about the personal leadership skill development that you need. All these, these softer interpersonal skills, but also the hard ones. A lot of times a bad, bad boss is just somebody doesn't follow through and everybody yeah, It's not in. always a right. mean things person. Are, things it's, are, 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 it's chaotic. It's someone not enforcing yeah. or not having consequences. Yeah. It speaking, could be that side speaking too. Speaking up, you gotta speak up. At what yeah. point do you present them your business card, Tim McCarthy? <laughs> Boss, I feel like maybe you could spend some time in some executive coaching. Well, a, a lot of my work comes from uh, from the bosses of the bosses. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. that's the better way to go. Exactly. That's the better way to that's go. That's one of the people yeah. that you need to talk to. When Very the complaints good. trickle up, yes, right? that's the way to do so it. So any right. boss is listening. <laughs> that's right. Tim's your guy. Kirsten, Tim, thank you so yeah, much. Thanks. Well, bug bites are becoming.